Hey everyone, and thanks for tuning in. As you can see, I've made another stencil painting. It's a lot of fun. I love making these stencil paintings because once the stencil's made, it's really easy to make all kinds of changes. So in this case, I put the chair next to the figure. This figure, by the way, is of uh, it's from a photograph of Lisa Lyon. Lisa Lyon, famous uh, bodybuilder during the 80s. She was photographed by a very famous photographer, Robert Maplethorpe, and I think there's even a book called Lisa Lyon, I think. Uh, but anyway, so this is kind of like a strong person pose, and I just like the figure next to the chair. I also think a lot of design is based on the, fig the female form, so I kind of like that conversation. And because it's a stencil, it doesn't really... Uh, take a lot of time to see what this figure is going to look like next to this chair. So that's the cool thing about making stencils. If you want to make this image and you're looking for the uh, image, it's on my Patreon. So if you want to make some of these, become a patron, just follow what I do and you can make them. I think I'm going to do a lot more stencils because they're a lot of fun and they once you make them, you kind of get that buzz from making a painting, but they don't take up a lot of space. They just take up the, you know, the space of a thickness of paper. So theoretically, I could make a hundred paintings and store them in an area uh, two inches wide. So that's appealing to me because I like to make images and see what things look like, but often I don't want a lot of stuff around me. Um, so there's, like I said, these things are limitless. I, I think what I'd like to see is maybe three of the figures on one piece of paper. Uh, one of the questions I got on the last shop talk when I made the blue chairs was, what kind of paper am I using? This is a 200 pound uh, Arches, or Archies. I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce it, but if you look up Archies, uh, you'll find it at one of the big art stores. So it's 200 pound, it's 100% cotton rag, and it's hot pressed paper. The difference between a hot pressed paper and a cold pressed paper is hot press has a smooth surface. So if you're making stencils, a smooth surface is going to give you a cleaner line. Uh, this size of the paper here is 26 by 40, and as far as framing any of these images, I'll probably cover that on a, a Patreon video sometime in the near future. But if, if you're looking to figure out how to frame a work on paper without putting it behind glass, you'll be able to find a video on my channel. Just, um, just go to my channel and search mounting works on paper and something should come up. But anyway, I would use, first of all, I would make a braced panel, which is, you know, exactly what it sounds like. It's a quarter inch plywood with a frame and some, some bracing in the back. And then I would glue the paper to the braced panel using an acrylic matte medium, make the panel maybe a half of an inch smaller than the image, and then after you glue the paper to the panel, you can use a razor blade to cut it flush. Uh, you can also use the acrylic matte medium as a protective uh, coating for the paper. So after after you mount the work on paper to the braced panel, you can brush on the acrylic matte medium. So that's, uh, that. the nice thing about that is you don't have to put it behind glass and that makes the framing process a little bit easier. And also the, the problem with putting something behind glass is no matter how um, reflective free the glass is, it still seems to have a reflective quality to it. So uh, I just try to try to come up with ways where I don't have to put images behind glass. So um, I guess that was it as far as the questions. Uh, I do plan on doing a lot more with the stencils. Right now I'm just feeling pretty excited about making different images and I do have the Bikini Girls, I do have other chairs, and slowly but surely I'll be putting more and more uh, stencil artwork on my Patreon. So 
If you like these images, uh, consider becoming a patron. I thought I'd talk a, a little bit about whether or not this is art. You know, art is so subjective. I, I sort of stopped caring about whether I'm making art or not, or what's considered art. Generally, what I'm trying to do is or not even trying to do, I just think of something, I think, oh, that would look pretty cool, and then I make it. So my main question about making a painting is whether or not I'm going to like the image and whether or not it's something I would hang in my home. So as far as art, I don't really, I can't really care about the art world, especially today. I mean, I don't know if you follow the news, but I think it was two or three weeks ago during Art Basel, uh, one of the artists duct taped a banana to the gallery wall and four of those bananas sold for $120,000 each and then the art gallery owner uh, upped the price to $150,000 that one sold and then some other artist came in and ate the banana and that's kind of like a whole scene and maybe it makes for an interesting story but as far as as far as it having anything to do that I'm interested in, it just doesn't. So I just don't think about art. I don't think about what's considered important art. I generally just think like what looks cool and what's going to look good like as far as design goes. Uh, I think trying to guess what is art and what's going to be the next art is really like impossible because it's such an obscure thing. Like who would have thought that a banana taped to a wall would sell for $120,000. Now, apparently there's some story behind it and it makes sense if you care about that stuff. But I basically, uh, I just don't. And I'm very happy just making images. So whether it's art or not, doesn't really matter to me as long as I like the image. So I guess that's it for now. I will be posting a woodworking video on Friday and uh, I cut a tree down the other day. I didn't want to cut this tree down because it's a beautiful American beech tree that I transplanted. It was over by the barn uh, when we bought the house here. It was actually too close to the barn so I transplanted it. But I transplanted it too close to an oak tree. The oak tree is just big beautiful oak tree and they were starting to crowd each other. So. I cut the tree down and I'm going to, uh, the only good part about cutting this tree down is uh, it's really beautiful wood and I'm going to mill the wood, I'll build a piece of furniture with the trunk and I'll make a few mallets with some of the, the branches. It's a very heavy, dense wood. I've never worked with beech wood before, but just getting a feel of it when I was cutting the tree down and uh, I am making a video about that because... I used, uh, I used the Ego Chainsaw to do it. It's not a sponsored video by Ego, but um, I wanted to see how far I could get with one charger. And I was able to cut the whole tree down and limit, do everything with just one charge. I continually thought I was going to run out of battery because uh, you know it's got that little indicator where you've got like five, four, three, two, and one. And uh, it made it, made the whole thing. So. Uh, that video will probably go up on Tuesday, and then on Friday or Saturday, I'll have a woodworking video on the main channel. So I hope that you'll tune in for that and comment and like and all that good stuff. All right. As always, thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you soon.